Welcome to Physics in Three Dimensions. If you're watching this video, I assume that you have some experience with physics at a basic level and are preparing to study more advanced topics like electromagnetism or classical mechanics. One of the first steps you'll need to take in advanced physics is becoming comfortable working in three dimensions. This series will help you take that step. Most of the problems in basic physics take place in two dimensions. That means you need two variables to model whatever is happening in the problem and you have two options for those variables. The first option is the Cartesian coordinates x and y. This system of coordinates tells you how far left or right a point is and how far up or down a point is. The x and y coordinates operate independently since their axes point at a right angle to each other. x and y can be positive or negative indicating which direction along each axis they're located. The second option is the polar coordinates r and theta. This system of coordinates tells you how far away from the origin a point is and in what direction the point is rotated compared with a positive x-axis. r must be a positive number or zero since it simply measures the distance from the origin. Theta usually falls between zero and two pi radians. Each of these coordinate systems is useful in different contexts and converting from one to the other just involves a little trigonometry. When we upgrade to working in three dimensions, we need three variables to model whatever is happening in the problem. And we have three options for those variables, Cartesian coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, and spherical coordinates. The first option is the Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z. This system works just like two-dimensional Cartesian coordinates, telling you how far in or out a point is, how far left or right a point is, and how far up or down a point is. Again, the x, y, and z coordinates operate independently since their axes point at a right angle to each other. You can write a vector in Cartesian coordinates in two formats. First, you can list the x component, y component, and z component in a set of brackets. These operate like a set of instructions for how far in each direction the vector's components should point. Second, you can write the vector as an algebraic expression involving each of the components multiplied by its corresponding unit vector. The Cartesian unit vectors x hat, y hat, and z hat each indicate a distance of one unit along their corresponding axis. These unit vectors are useful when it comes to working out algebraic equations involving vectors. For example, let's suppose we place a proton at 2, 1, 0. The electric field of this proton will point outward away from the proton. Each of these electric field vectors has a different x component, y component, and z component based on its position relative to the proton. On the other hand, let's suppose we turn on a uniform magnetic field like inside a permanent magnet. Now all of the field vectors are the same, and they have the same x component, y component, and z component. Cartesian components are best used when solving a problem by brute force or when programming a computer simulation. Let's add a proton to our uniform magnetic field. The proton will move around in a circle perpendicular to the magnetic field. This means that the direction of the magnetic field is a special direction in the problem. We can make this problem easier by pointing the z-axis along the direction of the magnetic field while the x and y axes can point in any direction they like. Because of this arbitrariness of x and y, this problem lends itself to being solved in cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates are very similar to two-dimensional polar coordinates in that we measure the distance from the z-axis and the angle in the xy plane. To measure the third dimension, we simply add the z direction. We call the distance from the z-axis s, the angle in the xy plane phi, and the distance along the z direction z. So you can describe a vector in cylindrical coordinates using an s component, a phi component, and a z component. Again, you can write these components in a set of brackets or write them algebraically using the corresponding unit vectors. 
These unit vectors are a little more nuanced than the Cartesian unit vectors. At each point in space, the s hat unit vector points away from the z axis, the phi hat unit vector points counterclockwise around the z axis, and the z hat unit vector points along the z axis just like before. Although these unit vectors are different at each location in space, they always point perpendicular to each other at each point in space. This arrangement works out perfectly for our proton in a magnetic field since the z-axis takes care of the magnetic field and the s-hat and phi-hat vectors take care of the proton's position and velocity. However, cylindrical coordinates don't work out so well for the electric field of a proton, since the field vectors don't follow that same symmetry. For this problem, we are best off using spherical coordinates. For a proton's electric field, it doesn't really matter what direction any of the axes point, the field will still look the same. So in spherical coordinates, we use only one distance value, r, the distance from the origin to the point we're interested in. The other two coordinates, theta and phi, are both angles. You can think of these as like latitude and longitude. Theta measures the angle the vector points downward from the z-axis. Phi measures the angle the vector makes around the xy plane, just like it did in cylindrical coordinates. The unit vectors for spherical coordinates represent these directions at each point in space, with r hat pointing outward from the origin, theta hat pointing down from the z-axis, and phi hat pointing around the z-axis. These unit vectors are perfect for displaying the electric field of a proton since each electric field vector only has an r hat component and no theta hat or phi hat component. I hope you've seen that none of these coordinate systems is better than another. They each have something unique to offer based on the problem you're studying.